Chris on the back end um, for me. I could definitely not have done this without his, his support and guidance. Um, we are recording this meeting um, and it will be posted. Um, with the questions, we will come back to all of those in the end. Um, I wanna thank a, a, a lot of my staff who I can see out there. Um, it is Teacher Appreciation Week um, and we greatly appreciate you. So a huge shout out to all of you as well. Um, Mr. Marco is here, I'm sure as a mom, but also um, as the white and principal. So I wanna thank you for joining us as well as Dr. Tiano and Ms. Squire and Ms. Ramsdell. Um, so the things that we're going to kind of cover tonight are really remote learning, what we know, what we're working on, um, and really what we're planning for, for next year. Um, but first and foremost, I, I really want to say, um, when I was putting this together, I really was thinking about, well, why do you want to do this? Um, and really, I miss all of you. I miss the seeing you. I miss the seeing your children. Um, Taft is definitely not the same, um, and I look forward to everybody walking through the doors. Um, I thank you for all of the outreach that people have had and all of the support you have given to us and, and to our staff. Um, so thank you. This is definitely a true partnership during what is very unprecedented. Um, so to, to start off, um, when the district has started and we knew that we were going to, to go into remote learning, we really had some guiding principles that we wanted, wanted to put out there. Number one was to staying connected, um, not just with students, but with our families, with one another. Uh, and that, that connection is what has definitely gotten us through this. Uh, we definitely wanna provide a flexible learning structure. At our level, um, we know that this is challenging. Uh, no, no parent was expecting to, to be a, a teacher overnight. We also understand you're really trying to balance work and home. Uh, and we're trying to be as flexible with tech and non-tech. It, our, our structure is a little bit different than the high school. You know, older students can sit on a computer and can go through their assignments a little bit easier. We understand that we have a middleman and, and that's you as parents and we couldn't do this without you and we greatly appreciate you um, and are trying to find that, that balance of, of support with you. We definitely wanna to continue to ensure equity for all of our students. So whether that be technology, non-technology, but also making sure we're providing the appropriate resources for kids. Um, and then really trying to understand that we want students to continue to grow and learn during this time away. But this is unprecedented and we are going through a roller coaster of emotions, of experiences. Um, our, our teachers are, our, our administration is, you are at home and recognizing that every day we don't really know what that's going to look like. Um, and we understand that and appreciate that and that it's okay. Um, We've been provided a lot of guidance from the Department of Elementary Secondary Education. Um, that guidance has changed as our situation has changed. So last Tuesday, we received a lot of guidance. Um, but when they started with their guidance, they really came out with some guiding principles as well. Obviously, safety and well being of students and families and staff was their number one top priority, um, as well as the equity and the maintaining connections. Um, with the guidance that came out, last Tuesday after the governor had announced that we would no longer be going to school for, for the remainder of the year. Um, we were really pleased as a district, I was really pleased as the leader of Taft, that a lot of the work that we had already started was very consistent with the guidance. The biggest difference was that the state put out what they're calling critical standards that are considered those essential standards as we transition to students to the next grade next year. Um, so our staff has spent a lot of time um, starting to review those critical standards. What did we teach before we left? What do we still need to cover through remote learning as we move forward into next year? Um, as far as you know, continuing to strengthen the what we're already doing and why we're already doing it, um, Taft was, um, I can pretty much say was woefully unprepared to go into remote learning. Technology was very new for us. We were just rolling out Chromebooks. Um, first grade had just received Chromebooks in January. Our staff really hadn't participated in a lot of professional development. Uh, Google Classroom, um, definitely no Zooming or anything like that. Um, so a huge shout out to those teachers um, as we have been kind of putting our plane together as it has been in full flight um, and we are continuing to learn and grow. Um, so really we're trying to focus on that instruction, 
The enrichment opportunities, so as you know, our specialists put out new activities uh, every day. They have been fantastic. They're, they're trying very hard to make sure that they're connecting with you as well. Um, as well as we're, we're trying to make sure that teachers are connecting through whether it be Zoom, they're starting to create office hours. Um, so this really has been a work in progress. We've had many, many stages. We continue to grow each week. We're getting better at it. Um, but I'm definitely proud of my teachers and the hard work that they have been doing as they've been learning on the go as well. Um, as far as academics, um, like I said, we're really gonna focus on those critical standards that the state has put out um, that they say are most important in going into the next grade level. We know that we're not going to cover all of the state standards this year. That's not possible. Um, and as we're looking at what we're doing next year, we're gonna take that into consideration, um, figure out how we're gonna assess that and how we are then going to teach those standards that we're not getting to. Um, we've really tried to emphasize with our staff as a whole, consistency across every single grade level, um, as well as to provide activities that are engaging, you know, the, the real world, go out into nature, um, you know, create five sentences based off of what you saw in nature, find as many things outside that start with the letter S. Um, and we're really working on trying to figure out how to provide feedback on student work that's been submitted. Um, Google Classroom was new to all of my staff, and so we're continuing to provide professional development to them so we can continue to do our feedback a little bit better. Um, communication, so as teachers have been going, we have been trying our hardest to keep up with the communication, obviously trying to continue with our Sunday updates, as well as I know staff have been communicating out. The one shift in the guidance was to really get out assignments on Friday so that families could really plan what their week looked like. We understand that many of our families are still working uh, and that sometimes you're, you're handing those lessons off to a caregiver or um, another a, a high school student in your household or things like that. So we wanna give families enough time um, to really digest what those assignments are as well as be able to have the opportunity to ask any clarifying questions that need be. Um, we are trying to prioritize making some recorded lessons. This is new for us. Um, and with that technology curve, we're figuring out how to address teaching those new standards. Um, I have to thank Wendy Phillips, our director of curriculum. She's been providing a lot of professional development for our staff um, and really trying to keep up with their needs, as well as our instructional coaches, Mrs. Manns, Mrs. Doyle, and Mrs. Bragg, who've really helped assist our, our, our staff. Um, right now, uh, one of the conversations we're having as a staff is really trying to differentiate for you at home. What are we strongly recommending that students complete as well as what's optional? So obviously want, we want to provide a lot of activities. Um, we don't want to overwhelm families, but we want to have that balance that if people want to do more, it's there to do. But really trying to delineate if there's anything that you can pick from, those recommended activities are what we're asking to get done. Our staff, as far as the access and accessibility, um, all of our faculty and staff are working on, um, they're available during the school day to check email, as well as many of them are really working 24 seven around the clock um, to the point we've asked them to, to slow down a little bit. Um, we're trying to balance kind of that at home. We don't wanna overwhelm you. Where's too much communication? Where's not enough? Um, also, Every day, sometimes that's not a realistic expectation. I had a, a conversation with a, a mom the other day and she said to me, she said, Jen, I just, uh, you know, it's a struggle. We don't want it to, to be a struggle. Um, we don't want it to be a, a battle between you and your child. Sometimes it's okay to just walk away. Sometimes it's okay to take a break and to come back to something. Um, we understand this is difficult and we want you, we want you to have that balance. We, we want it to be enjoyable. Um, and so please give yourselves a time for a break as well. Please let us know if there are extenuating circumstances or struggles that are, are not allowing you to connect um, with, your, with your classroom teacher, with the learning, um, because we wanna work through that with you as well and provide you support um, as we do this together. Uh, for our technology, I cannot have a bigger shout out to our IT department. Patrick Missler um, deserves a medal as far as heroes are concerned. He has worked effortlessly with his team to provide Chromebooks um, for families that are in need. 
if you are in need of technology, please email your classroom's teacher or, my, or, or me, um, and we will work with you to, to, to provide that with you. Um, he continues to do that um, every single week, um, and I know that he's continuing to roll out Chromebooks this week. Nurse Becky, uh, Nurse Becky, I know you're here, so if you wanna definitely jump in if I'm gonna miss anything. Um, if you have medication that is at the school and needs to be picked up, please email Nurse Becky and she'll arrange a time for you to come to pick that up. Um, obviously, students, you know, we still need those medical records. If you're getting those immunizations, those physicals, the things like that, we definitely still need those for the start of the year. You can fax those, you can email those to Becky. Um, as well as remember that, uh, Becky, are you there? Yeah, I just unmuted. <laughs> okay, um, that for medication orders, they're needed every year. Um, Becky, do you have anything you wanna add to that? Um, just a reminder that my email is, oh, you have it on there, rpadula at uxbridge.k12.ma.us. Um, we still want all the information faxed in as soon as possible, because we're still continuing as if, we're gonna start in September, so. Um, and also, I miss all the kiddos. I hope everyone's doing well, and can't wait to get back. Thanks, Nurse Becky. Um, Thank you. Nurse Becky is, is working around the clock. We, we chat often, so if you are in need of something or have a question for her, please feel free to reach out to her um, with anything. Yes, thank you. So what I know and what I'm sure of um, is that school is closed for the remainder of the year. Um, the last day of school for students in grades one through three is June 17th. Um, preschool and kindergarten currently have different um, last days on our original calendar. I will be honest that I have embarked in a conversation with Dr. Chiano, and I know it's a school committee conversation, um, just around that preschool and that kindergarten last day and what that will look like now that we're in remote learning. Um, remote learning plans for students on disabilities have been emailed out from liaisons and I know everybody's been in touch um, and working with families. We have the stay at home order that's been extended until at least May 18th um, and that does play a piece of, of our planning as far as trying to get materials out of the building and things like that. Um, I know that DESE is planning to um, provide guidance later this week around grading. This is more critical at the high school level, but I do know that they will provide us with some type of guidance around grading. Um, all of our students are moving up to the next grade level. If you have a concern about that, because I have heard from a, a couple parents, please feel free to reach out to me, email me. Um, I, I can set up a time to, to call you. Um, but all of our students are coming in with the same playing field. They all will have been out for the same amount of time. Granted, everyone's experience is gonna be very different because it's based off of what's going on in the home, but all of our students are, gonna, are, are, are moving forward and we're going to address that through assessments and through our instruction and through our, curricu our curriculum. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna get through this um, and we will hit the ground running in the fall. Our teachers are already working on those plans or we're working on those plans um, as a leadership team as well. Um, so I don't, want, I don't want people to have concerns over that. Preschool screening, which typically occurs in June, will be held in the fall as well. Um, we can start preschool um, and, and not have to worry about that kids aren't screened. What we're working on is we're working on a plan for getting students and staff in the building to get materials and to, to clean out their classrooms as well as their lockers. I've received a lot of emails from, from parents. You know, My student has stuff in their desk. My student has stuff in their locker. We are working on those plans. Um, we're working on the last day of pre-K and K. Kindergarten screening has been canceled for June, um, working with um, central office, um, as well as waiting for some guidance from DESE around what the summer will look like um, for extended school year even. Um, so we will be holding screening prior to the school year. It's just, I'm not necessarily sure those dates at this point as well as what that will necessarily look like. Um, I do know that um, if we are able to hold those dates, I will hold some evening sessions. As I know, once families start to be able to go back to work, it will be a hardship for people to take off time during the day to bring their child to a screening. We will be very cognizant of that and we'll work with everybody to make sure that children are screened. Um, and we're really working on ways for students to connect over the summer. 
So one thing that I have said to all of my staff is, um, I promise them we will have closure. When we left on March 13th, we, we didn't even imagine that we would not be able to walk through those school doors um, again. And so we obviously understand there is a huge impact for students um, in the sense of closing out this year with their classroom teachers and starting a new year. We are working on those plans to provide some of that closure. Obviously, that's extremely important for our, our third grade kiddos um, right now, too. So with that being said, um, I know that all of you have seen my email regarding placement for students in kindergarten through second grade. Um, we are working really hard with Mrs. DeMarco and Mr. Irvine for that transition of our third grade students. Um, talking about a potential virtual tour, um, Mrs. DeMarco will be sending out um, a survey very similar to mine to get parent input regarding placement. Our teachers are filling out placement forms for white and as well as Mrs. DeMarco and I are planning to get our staff together on several occasions to really talk about that transition um, for, for those students because we know that that is super critical. Um, obviously, we know that we're, we're gonna, students are gonna need a lot of support, not just in curriculum, but um, in that social emotional realm. Um, we've been gone a long time and this has been hard and how do you really explain this to, to little guys? Um, and so we're, we're waiting for some more guidance from Desi there they call it a, the phase four and so they'll be providing some guidance to us around activities and things that we can be doing when we're coming back to school to support not only our staff but our students um, really we're, we're working on that transition we're working on safety protocols we're working on cleaning protocols we know that when when we open in the fall things might look different um, and so we want to make sure that we are being very forward thinking and planning ahead um, we're also, as a district, we're working with Dr. Chiano on the district improvement plan, as well as our school councils on our school improvement plans. Um, and that's really gonna help form that foundation of how we're gonna move forward. We had a solid foundation this year um, based off of our district improvement plan and our school improvement plans. And we made a lot of headway. And we obviously, as a district, wanna continue to move forward. Um, at Taft, we did some great things this year and we definitely wanna keep that momentum. Um, like I said, I, I can't shout out to my staff enough. I'm super proud of them um, for all that they've done and all, all that they're gonna continue to do to make sure that we're taking care of your, your children. Um, we've been working with the PTO. I actually met with the PTO board today. Um, so thank you to them. Um, we're working with um, Miss Ouellette, our art teacher, around providing a third grade art show. Um, we know that obviously we had to cancel our art show. Um, so we are hoping to provide something for them um, as they won't be here in the fall when maybe we're actually able to, to hold one. Um, our fun run that was planned for May at this point has been postponed till October. Um, they did let me know that PTO elections are open. If, if you wanna be added to the ballot for a position, you just need to email Christine Pizzullo at chrispizzullo at gmail.com by May 15th. They're also gonna hold a, a Zoom um, PTO meeting on May 13th. So though I will provide that information in my Taft update as well as uh, send out the Zoom invite the day of. Um, but please reach out to them and I thank them for all of their support on the back end. Um, they do a lot and they definitely keep the spirits, the spirits going, so thank you. Other supports from the district. Obviously, if you haven't checked out the district homepage, please do. Um, there's information on COVID-19, our UPS remote learning. There is some great activities from our counselors, um, from our school psychs uh, on there, as well as even from our behavior specialist, um, Ms. Weber, who has kind of some behavior management, um, different ideas, routines. Um, so definitely please check out the website. It's a great wealth of information as well as um, our food services. Um, thank you to them. They have been continuing to provide meals to families every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 11 to one. And that is something that is going to continue. Um, so if, if you need those meals, th that pickup is actually at Taft. But Steph Barstow and her crew, um, we thank you so much. Um, but if you need to access that, please do. Um, my big takeaways is, this is hard. 
Uh, this is this is really hard. If you asked me when I started in September at Taft, if this is the, the way I was going to be communicating and this is the way the year was going to be, I would have told you no way. Um, this has been by far probably the most challenging year of my career, as well as the most rewarding. Some of the things I have seen from students, from families, from staff, amaze me every single day. And I can't, I can't thank everybody enough for all of their hard work um, and their continued efforts. Because um, people really are, are working hard and we're all trying to balance work and family. Um, you know, my four-year-old will tell you that, mama, I don't like Zoom meetings because I'm on them so many times. Um, but we're, we're all trying to balance it. We're all trying to figure it out. But the one thing that I have learned this year is that Uxbridge is a true community. Um, and I wouldn't want to be doing this in any other place with any other staff. Um, so, so thank you to, to Uxbridge because it really is a special place to, to be. Um, as far as questions and answers, Mr. Rubin, is there anything as I try to go up here to my chat? Yeah, I'm just unmuting myself. I'm just going to go in order and thanks. Uh, I know Mr. Marco and Dr. Tiana were able to answer uh, a couple of them, but I think it's just easiest to um, just start at the beginning and um, I can read them to you. And the first one, I think you touched on a little bit, but when uh, the building may be open to retrieve belongings. Oh, and I accidentally muted you, sorry. That's okay. Um, so that's something we're going to continue to work out. Um, obviously, with the governor, if we if they start to open um, things slowly on May 18th, I'm sure that will play a piece into our plan as well as I'm, I, my understanding is Desi is going to provide us a little bit more guidance around that. But I do know that that's something that, um, you know, Mr. Rubin, Mr. Marco and myself have, have really been talking with Dr. Tiano about as well. Um, so I do know that that's that's in the works. Um, Dr. Tiano, I don't know if you want to add anything to that or say anything at this time. Well, it's, it, it's actually what you just said there, um, Ms. Pale. We were in a conference call with the commissioner today, and these are the same questions that are being asked all across the county. Well, um, with the stay-at-home order right now, um, that gives us more time to put plans in place to ensure the safety of everybody who enters our building. Um, you know, we know that uh, you know this is a priority for folks. And at the same time, we want to make sure we put together plans that we do it well and we do it once. Thanks for your patience. Thank um, you. There, there, um, so, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Ms. Rubin. I was just going to read the next question. So, so. Go for it. The next question had to do with uh, the state standards. If people choose learning independently, the um, I had pasted, there's a link to uh, on uh, the Department of Ed's webpage, there's a link for um, just all the COVID-19 resources and um, embedded in one of those letters is a link for both the elementary and the secondary uh, standards that are considered the essential ones. So I pasted that uh, somewhere in that, in that group chat on the side. Um, and that's something that I can provide in our Taft update this Sunday as well, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Uh, the next question is that there's typically a move up day from Taft to Whiten. Any plans for some type of open house before summer, uh, over the summer before school is back in session? Mrs. DeMarco, do you want to, I'm going to reach out to you and put you on the spot while you're here. Uh, yes, I actually did uh, try to respond to that uh, during the during your presentation. Yes, I, what we typically do um, in a in a normal school year is that we have an ice cream social that's scheduled in August for uh, parents and students to come. Um, th those uh, incoming fourth graders and their parents to come, and uh, they tour the building. Um, I have a question and answer session and a, a, a little bit of a presentation. Um, the plan is for us to continue to do that and schedule that for August. And, um, you know, if something changes, we'll certainly uh, be reaching out to everyone, but that, that still is our plan. And then as far as a move up day for the students, uh, we're looking at doing something virtual uh, for the third graders um, so that they can start um, to get an idea of what to expect at Whiten for fourth grade. Awesome, thank you. Um, 
And like I said, Mr. Marco and I are continually having conversations about this and working together um, to really try to ensure a smooth transition of our third grade up, up to weigh in. Absolutely. Mr. Rubin, you've muted yourself. Uh, I, that's because I had a child come in, I'm sorry. Um, recorded lessons or live time, does this mean there'll be virtual classes and activities or just doing casual Zoom check-ins? So right now, um, our, our Zooms are really focused around that social emotional connection, um, as well as by, by doing a recorded lesson, it ensures um, equity and access to all families because we understand that for some families that might be at 10 o'clock in the morning, but for other families it might be at 7 o'clock at night when a, a mom or dad's coming home from, from work. Um, so really we're going to continue to focus on our Zooms as um, more of that social emotional activity, more around that morning meeting concept. I do know, especially in second and third grade, they're starting to do some comprehension checks just on, on activities that uh, have been going on during the week. Um, but for, for our little guys, that's really hard. Um, for, for kindergarten, typically we're going 15 minutes and then we're, we're moving or we're, we're changing to something else, as well as so much of what we do at our level is really hands-on, um, that that becomes challenging to, to really have a a live lesson um, and we really want it to be fun and engaging for kids and, and a, an opportunity for them to connect with their friends as well as their teachers. Mr. Rubin, un unmute yourself again. Um, am I unmuted now? Now you're unmuted. Yes. Okay, I am, I'm sorry, uh, needs improvement. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Marco, we'll have it down before yours tomorrow. Yeah, uh, pregame mu music and um, better on the mute controls. Um, when will information come out regarding kindergarten screening? I think you touched on that. Yeah, so um, we're hoping to make that decision sooner rather than later. I think um, the guidance from the state as well as when the governor um, starts to, to open um, some, of, some of the businesses will help us determine that. Um, my, my hope right now is um, end of July, beginning of August, um, because I, I would like that information to help with class placements. Um, with that being said, um, if, if we're able to do it earlier, we would love to do it earlier. As soon as we can, we can set those dates in stone, we will be reaching out to families immediately. As well as, like I said, um, we will be providing some evening opportunities. Um, typically, we try to get our screening done in three days. We understand that that might not be feasible going into a summer when, when there are work schedules as well as families that might actually be going on vacations to still and, and things like that. We are gonna work with every single one of our families. Um, we do continue to do registration. So if, if you have medical records that still need to come in, please be emailing them to Nurse Becky. As well as if, if you haven't registered your kindergarten yet, please reach out to me um, as well as my secretary, Kim Hill. Um, and we are, we're doing registration virtually right now. Um, the next question had to do with extended school. I'm not sure if they mean extended school day, like your your after school program, or if they mean extended school year, meaning the uh, the summer program. So um, I, I'm 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 going to venture a guess that we meant extended school year. Right. So we're working with Ms. Ramsdell um, as well as our interim director, um, Ms. Austin regarding our extended school year program, we're still waiting for additional guidance from the state around that of whether that will look virtually, whether it will be able to be small group and in person. Um, there's a lot of things that we don't necessarily have answers for right now. And I know that's frustrating to you as parents. It's definitely frustrating to us as, as administrators. Um, and because we want to be planning all of these things. Right now, there are plans in the work for, for both. If we were going virtual, if we're going, um, if, if we're going in person, um, we're trying to work that out. I know that Ms. Ramsell and I had a conversation today about it, as well as with Ms. Austin. As soon as we know, you will know. Um, but but there, there will definitely be some type of extended school year for students who do qualify for it. Um, with last week's announcement, can we expect kindergarten instruction to get more specific beyond the grids that have been provided weekly? So all of our instruction is going to change slightly as we continue to, to ramp up and continue to try to cover all of those um, critical standards and to introduce a new material. Um, so you will see 
changes throughout this week and the coming weeks. Um, hopefully you've seen the progression as far as, as our teachers have been learning new material, new technology, utilizing that technology. Um, if you have specific questions or concerns, I do, I would recommend that you reach out to your child's classroom teacher. Um, as always, feel free to send me an email, um, but we'll, we'll continue to ramp up our game. Um, as I said, we're trying to still continue to find that balance of overwhelming families, um, as well as providing meaningful opportunities for students. Uh, could you provide a list of tutors accredited for parents that could work through the summer to help working parents that have less time to homeschool? So I don't even know what our district policy is around tutoring. <laughs> um, so I might deflect that question. <laughs> Dr. Tiana, you want to help me out with that one? In, in terms of recommending tutors? Yeah. We're, we're not in the business of, of recommending private tutors uh, for folks. Um, so that's not something that, that we're in the we'll business of. But I'm sure. I will say to that, um, you know, every, I know parents are extremely concerned about their child's education and coming back and, and what they've lost and, or what they, ha what they need in moving forward. Um, all students are really coming back in the same kind of predicament around that. And we certainly know um, one of the running jokes kind of at Taft right now is um, for the first time ever, um, the whole building will experience what kindergarten experiences every single year of, of you just don't know the skill set that kids are coming into when they when they walk through your doors in kindergarten. Um, that's how we feel of coming back, but we will definitely have a solid plan in place to address that curriculum um, to, to work on that instruction and to provide students who are in need of assistance, that assistance. Uh, this is also perhaps related to, to summer programming, uh, but an option for students who have IEPs to attend a summer school to get back into the swing of things. Um, and I, again, I know we do have the extended school year and I, I know what our our qualifications are like at the secondary level. I don't want to speak to yours. Um, so that is a team decision, and that is a something um, that's that's something that a team determines. Um, if Miss Ramsell is here, I'll have her um, jump in on this. Jen, Mike is Jen here? Um, she was. I'm here. Okay. She is. So Jen, Jen, do you want to speak to extended school year? Absolutely. Um, and I just want to reiterate what Jen was saying, that we are actively working behind the scenes right now on planning both for face-to-face -face and what that may potentially look like, as well as um, for what a potential remote learning ESY would be. Um, all students that have been had team meetings this year that have been recommended by their team um, for ESY are already on my lists. Um, I know we still have, you know, families may still have meetings coming up, but at this point in the year, um, all special education staff should have the data to support a recommendation for ESY. Um, and that recommendation is based on significant regression of skills after a break in service, um, as well as a student's learning profile. Um, so those are, that's the criteria that we use district wide when making an ESY determination. Um, and, you know, we're in the works. I know as a parent, it's so hard to plan and predict and, and go about your day to day. We're really um, looking forward to May 18th when the governor, we have further discussions um, on what, what is gonna happen. Um, so I appreciate everyone's patience and holding tight as we work on this. As soon as we have more information, we'll certainly let everybody know. Um, so, Mr. Rubin, I've seen that we have a couple of questions just around um, kind of Zooming and, and teachers and face-to-face um, -face meetings and things like that. Um, like I said here at Taft, everything has been in stages and, and, and teachers are, are working um, as hard as they can to, to learn this new technology. Um, so please be patient with them. Um, I do know that they're working to, to provide some small group opportunities as well as some office hours for families, um, as well as reach out to teachers. If, if your child is in need of support, um, please reach out to our staff because they will work with you um, to provide those, those various opportunities. Um, the state has provided critical standards at all grade levels, so kindergarten, first, second, and, and, and third grade. Um, so those are standards that we, we want 
all of our kindergartners to know um, before entering first grade next year. Um, and those are those are things that we are are addressing. Um, so, you know, it, by all means, if you have concerns about something, please definitely reach out to your classroom teacher as, as well as to myself. Um, the, the next question, I mean, there are a couple questions about, about class time. I think you just answered, answered all of them. Um, just to clarify, third grade, uh, they'll be moving to Whiten in fourth grade, but the third graders stay at, stay at Taft in grade three. Um, the next question is more technology related, and it has to do with the access to programs through summer, like Epic, uh, I'm sorry, Epic, Raz Kids, Happy Numbers, Extra Math, um, and will the account stay active through the summer for students to use? My understanding is that all of our accounts are gonna stay active and we're gonna to continue to work with Ms. Phillips um, as well as our instructional coaches to make sure that they remain active throughout the summer as well as even as we transition into next year. Um, we wanna make sure that we then are keeping to incorporate technology in our instruction even when we're back at Taft. Um, you know, I, I would hope that we would never have to do this again, um, but in the case that we, we would ever have to do this again, um, it's definitely something that is on my mind to make sure that we have a more solid um, plan in place as well as that we provided a lot more professional development for our staff as well as opportunities for our students to be more comfortable with that technology. Um, physical report cards, do we know what the plan is for those? So right now we don't because we're waiting for the state guidance um, around grading. This, you know, as Dr. Tiano indicated, there was a call with the commissioner today. We do know that there will be further guidance regarding grading coming out later this week. At that point, we'll, we will determine um, whether we will be issuing those, those report cards and not um, or not at the end of the year and how we would get them to families. Um, we do understand that there are certain leagues that do require them. Um, if you reach out to, to us, my secretary can provide a, a PDF for you even now. Um, and for, for people who, for some reason, it got returned in the mail when we sent up the second term ones, we did have a couple and we were able to provide people um, PDFs through email. Uh, so that's something we definitely can work with folks on and hopefully we can um, continue to, to provide some further guidance around that in the future. Um. The next question is really about the uh, standardization of how grades use Google Classroom. Um, I can, all I can say is, you know, I, I can't speak to, um, to Taft. I, I can say I think the three of us, Ms. DeMarco, myself, and Ms. Belleville did try to make sure that we're all posting now on Fridays to give folks the weekends to plan. Um, but um, I know for us, some, some classes are turning things in using Google Classroom, others are just telling the students to, um, I've seen, you know, submit a Google form or copy a Google Doc. So I don't think it's necessarily that standard in that form, at least at the secondary level. Ms. Belvo? Um, so I know for us, the one message that I have asked from all of my grade levels is that they're consistent across the board. Um, so, uh, you know, a, a first grade Google Classroom is being used in a similar manner across, across the grade level. Um, you know, obviously, we're continuing to work on that as we didn't have a Google Classroom and, and we were continuing to, to learn that. We continue to learn new features. Um, we had a professional development um, at the end of last week, even on Google, as we have a, another one coming up, um, that just even trying to figure out how to post assignments. Uh, we do have a second grade teacher, Ms. Roshu, who has, has been helping us significantly with some of those how-tos, um, as well as our coaches. Um, so those are things that, you know, there's consistency across the grade level, um, but sometimes not necessarily what a kindergarten Google Classroom looks like versus a third grade Google Classroom. Obviously, they're very different in a, a kindergartner is doing a lot more um, hands-on and hopefully providing some more hands-on activities. Where third grade, they are able to do a little bit more of that, um, that writing and that submitting, that submitting work. Um, I do see um, Mr. Rubin, you know, just as far as there's some more questions about ESY. Um, and one of the questions was about starting earlier than September, um, that, you know, the school calendar is set for next year. Um, you know, I, that is not something I have, I have heard or anything like that. I know that, that, you know, our plan is to start when our school calendar has been approved um, to start and, and I don't see that, that changing. Um, as far as IEP meetings, um, we are holding IEP meetings virtually. Our team chairs, Liz DeShane, um, as well as Jen Ramsdell, um, our preschool coordinator, 
um, and soon to be next director. So congratulations, Jen, um, you know, has been hosting them um, and we will continue to host them. They reach out and, and try to confirm that with a family. Um, we also do know that there are a lot of meetings that are going to have to happen in the fall. We know timelines are off if children were up for reevaluations um, or were in mid testing. Um, so those those are all things that our special ed department is working really, really hard um, to do, as well as to to communicate with families. Jen, did I miss anything on that? Um, no, you are definitely right. But the piece that I just want to relate to families is that we're the team chairs and myself are in the process of reaching out to all families that were in, in the middle of an initial eval um, and having a conversation. Like you said, if, if testing hadn't even started, then we'll have a discussion on and, and getting an agreement with the families to push that to the fall. Um, Re-evals, if those were, if testing had happened and occurred, um, again, team chairs are reaching out to families and, and coming to a determination as to whether or not we want to have the meeting now virtually or push that off to the fall. Um, and then if consents were sent out for whether it's an initial or a reeval, we're reaching out to families as well. Um, and then written, written communication will be sent home to families. And this is going on right now. So the last two, kind of two questions that, um, that are being presented is, um, as far as submitting work. Um, so, you know, teachers are asking that work be submitted. They wanna, sometimes they're still trying to figure out how to, to do that in a Google Classroom. Our hope is over the next week, we're gonna figure out those kinks um, as they wanna provide some, some feedback. Um, as well as the other question is, is around the safety measures. So if school starts in September, we are talking about those safety measures, but we're also waiting for some guidance from the state. And so, like I said, you know, we don't have a lot of answers to those questions right now. We will be communicating that. Um, you know, my hope is that I will, uh, with Mr. Rubin's help, be doing another one of these um, probably in the next few weeks as, as questions um, come, you know, we get answers to a lot of these questions. Um, because those are things that are weighing heavy on all of our minds. Um, so as soon as we know, you definitely will know. Um, as always, please continue to reach out to your uh, classroom teachers, as well as please feel free to reach out to me, um, you know, our, our social worker, Nurse Becky, um, Mrs. Squire, Ms. Ramsdell. Um, we are all here to support you and um, cannot thank you enough um, and appreciate everything that everyone is doing. Um, and uh, again, thank you. Oxford is a very special place. It's a, it's a great community. Um, Dr. Tiano, do you have any final words that you would like to add? Well, I'm a Spellville. Just wanted to thank you for um, having this town meeting and thank our administrators as well. Uh, Ms. Ramsdell, Mr. Marco, Mr. Rubin, I, we know Ms. Phillips is online. You folks working together um, to make things happen. Uh, you keep hearing the phrase, you know, we're waiting for an update on that. Um, working in public schools, we are very um, used to being in routine and where this has been disrupted, um, our folks have been working together to provide support for our staff and for our families. I'd like to thank all of our staff. It is Staff Appreciation Week, Teacher Appreciation Week, and they've been doing some absolutely amazing uh, transformations in their professional lives as well as their personal lives and just say that we're grateful for all of our parents who are their children's first teachers happy uh, teacher appreciation to you as well and uh, thank you for sticking with us reach out to any one of us um, immediately if, if you have any questions we're here to work with you Thank you, and thank you to everybody who attended tonight. Um, please give all of your children a, a, a big hug for me. Um, as I said, we, we miss them greatly. Um, I can't wait to see them walk through those doors again, um, and definitely stay in touch. And if there's anything we can do for you, please just reach out and let us know. Have a great night. Okay, let's stop recording.